Hello everyone, dear friends. In today's video, I would like to show you a great idea of what you can do with your own hands from old unnecessary power supplies. To be honest, I have accumulated a whole box of such charges for a mobile phone, which cannot wait in the wings. Finally, the time has come when we will make an adjustable one from one of these power supplies, and thus we will be able to adjust the voltage from 3 to somewhere between 18 and 19 volts. It seems to me that this is just a godsend for DIYers, because often we need just such a power supply unit that outputs from somewhere between 3 and 19 volts. Higher voltage is extremely rarely useful to us somewhere. In general, fewer words and more action. Let's go to work. For the manufacture of such an adjustable converter, I will use a 5 volt and 2 ampere power supply. We also need such an adjustable 100 kilo ohm resistor, another 18 kilo ohm resistor, one stabilizer, or so called TL431 Zener diode. First, we need to open the power supply case. It is, of course, not collapsible, but we will try to do it carefully. Most of these switching power supplies have only one Zener diode. So that is what we need to solder now. We solder two wires in place of the Zeno diode. The compensation stabilizer has three pins, an input, an anode and a cathode. At that moment we don't need an anode. So we bend the pin and we are left with the input and the cathode. We solder these two pins to the adjustable resistor and by the way, the TL431 is one of the most massively produced integrated circuits, still first of its release in 1978. Most often, it is installed in the most power supplies for the computers, laptops, televisions, video and audio equipment and other consumer electronics. Such popularity, guys, is due to the low cost, high accuracy and versatility. Personally, I bought such a stabilizer on the radio market from one grandpa for two Moldovan lei. Translated into cents, I don't know, literally a couple of cents. Now we solder one pin of the resistor to the adjustable resistor and the second pin to the stabilizer anode. As you remember, earlier we would have removed the Zener diode and soldered two wires instead. So we need to solder the wire from the anode of the Zener diode to the stabilizer anode. And the wire from the cathode of the Zener diode to the cathode of the stabilizer. So, guys, the adjustable power supply passed the preliminary check with the bank, so now all these can be carefully assembled and then fully tested. Guys, the resistor didn't fit in the upper part. I already started to panic, I thought I'd have to make a separate case. I didn't want to come up with it, but fortunately I managed to place it at least on the side. It looks very cool, because I also found such a thing in the trash, and the end result, I think, is cooler than the store one. And no one will even say that this power supply was made by hand. Here is such an adjustable from the usual. Very cool. But in order to close the hole that was made earlier, see what solution I found. Found. In my trash are these stickers for furniture. They fit the diameter perfectly, they stick good and look cool.
To begin with, we will check our homemade adjustable power supply with a multimeter and see how many minimum and maximum volts it gives out. Now the power supply is at least 3.5 volts. We start adding a little. 6 volts. 7 volts, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The maximum value is 15 volts. I think we have achieved a wonderful result since the maximum value is 15 volts, that's quite enough, but the minimum is 3.5 volts, which is also pretty good. Of course, the maximum and minimum values will depend on the power supply itself and on its characteristics. So, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you will definitely write some kind of comment, since I won't get tired of repeating this greatly helps the development of the channel. Well, it cheers me up if the comments are positive, so thank you so much for attention. Attention. Have a nice day, be healthy, bye-bye.